Hi guys, it's Mark Webber here and welcome to Los Angeles. I'm very, very excited to say that I have a special invite from Porsche to have a look inside what they've got at the LA Auto Show this year. And who better to take me around than Oliver Bloomer, the CEO, to see what's new and what they've got inside. Let's see what this invitation is all about, shall we? Well, there's plenty of work going on over there before the public is allowed in. We've got the all-electric Porsche Taycan there, which looks sensational. Performance corner over here. I'm loving that. And here's the man himself, Oliver Bloomer. Oliver, great to see you. Yeah, hi, Mark. Good to see you. How are you doing? Good to be here in LA. Yeah, may I introduce you to Alex? Absolutely. Hi, Alex Daria. Great to meet you, so of nice course. So nice to meet you. HBO White Lotus. That's yeah, right. Lots of nice cars. I like the Lotus Esprit, actually. Oh, the Lotus Esprit. Mm. There's, a, there's actually, there's no cars in White Lotus. None. It's on a beach. Swiftly moving on. What <laughs> brings you here to the show? Well, I'm working in LA, and Porsche very kindly invited me to come check out some cars. So here I am. Yeah, nice. So, Alex, what do you think about the booze? It's pretty cool. Very cool. I've already picked out my favorite car. I absolutely love it here. I feel the same, and I'm very proud of my team, and thanks to everybody who brought it to life. Looks absolutely extraordinary, Ollie. What have you cooked up this time, though? Because I think uh, it looks like a bit of a feast for me in terms of some rocket chips. Yeah, like every time in LA, we brought some very special pieces. First of all, the new GTS um, of the very successful Taycan, yeah. and then a real action hero, our new 718 GT4 RS, and we are looking forward to bring it to the road. An action hero. So <laughs> LA is the perfect place to bring these cars. That's why we are here. Well, that's a pretty awesome mix there, Oliver, in terms of you know having the first now fully electric GTS member of our family, uh, and really a nice broad range for us now. It is indeed, and that's what Porsche is about. It's always a sports car. And what we do is to combine our tradition with the future, and um, that's about responsibility and sustainability. That's awesome. I mean, I'm a traditional guy. I like it. I love the traditions we stick to with our brand, but also the, the sportiness and sustainability. It can't always be an easy balance for us now. That's the beauty of the challenge. And as you know, we develop our innovations in motorsport, like in the famous Le Mans prototype you have driven many times. And there we develop technologies we later on carried over to series production. And these technologies now, like the 800 volt system, is in the, in the Taycan. And many more to come. And uh, you can believe me, we have very extraordinary projects in our pipeline. More electric cars? Of course, electric cars are the future, and our target is um, to sell over 80% electric cars by 2030 already. And uh, that's not all um, to be carbon neutral. We are looking to the whole value chain. In other words, mate, the bigger picture. We're looking at that, right? Of course, we start in engineering, thinking about what the materials do we use, and we are looking to supply chain and our production sites. We have already carbon neutral. And then it comes to electric cars, but not only to bring them to the roads, but also thinking about um, the energy our customers are using. And then we think um, also to all the cars we have already on the roads. So you're even trying to make the cars that are already built more sustainable. How do you plan on tackling that? Porsche is very famous for having over 70% of our cars ever built still on the roads. And that's a big responsibility for us. I'm hearing a massive investment in e-fuels, right? So that's exciting for us. Yeah, you're right. We are investing in e-fuels, synthetic fuels done by renewable energy. Therefore, we are producing hydrogen, combine it to air-captured CO2, producing green methanol, and then coming to petrol, which we can use for all our cars that are still exist on the roads, or our new um, combustion engine cars like the 911. Wow, that sounds like science fiction. Actually, it's science fact. We are investing in a pilot plant in Chile, and our idea is to have the first batch nest next year, which we can use in motorsport, like uh, Super Cup um, we are driving with our 911s. Once again, transfer technology from the racetrack to the streetcars. Exactly. But I'm sure you want to see the cars. 100% I do. I'm going to catch up with Frank later on to talk all things GT4 RS. But in the meantime, Alex, I must say I'm going to go and catch up on the HBO series. You better. And I would love to learn more about the Taycan. Yeah. And there's Michael. He will be able to explain all the details about the Taycan. Hi, Michael. Hi, Alex. Hi. 
I was just saying that I had a favorite car, and this is it. This is such a beautiful car. Yeah, this is uh, the all-new Taycan GTS Sport Turismo. So what makes this car so special? I think two things. Um, first, um, it's the first all-electric car of Porsche that earned the GTS badge. And uh, the Taycan itself is a best-selling car, and it did win already a lot of awards, maybe more awards than any Porsche before. Mm. And the GTS version is more performance, more agility, more dynamics, basically more of what you want and what you love. So what else? What else, Alex? It's the body style. The Sport Turismo is just a more sportier, more dynamic variant of what you might know as the Cross Turismo. I love, I mean, I love the, the colors, the red paint and the black rims and decals. It's so cool. Yeah, well spotted. So it's uh, the GTS color. We have the Carmine Red for the GTS family, and it lives from the contrast of the black and Carmine Red. And this is uh, typical GTS DNA. So even the calipers are uh, colored in red. Uh, the dorsals are uh, a gloss black. So would you say that this is the perfect car for racing buffs? You could go on a racetrack <laughs> and have a lot of fun with this car. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but it's also a good car for every day. It's practical, but you can have a lot of fun, not only on country roads, but also on the racetrack. Sweet. Yeah. Can we check those out? Yes, come here. Oh, great. <gasps> Alex, yes. try this button. Well, okay, cool. What does it do? So, it just shuts the sunlight off. It's an electrochromatic panoramic sunroof. So, and with this nine segments, you can shut and shade uh, the sunlight off and also the heat off. So this is, from my point of view, a cool feature uh, for California. Yeah, that's very cool. You can also keep the paparazzi out, which is very cool for Los Angeles. So what else have you gotten here? I love the feeling of this sport steering wheel. Yeah, this is our so-called race tax material. Uh, it's a material you find with every GTS, so it's a typical GTS ingredient and it's derived from our race cars. Oh, cool. So you have a leather-free option. That's really good. And I love the stitching and the stitching on the headrest. Like, the attention to detail is amazing. But that's just looks and appearances, and you know that you can't judge a book by its cover. Exactly. Real elegance and technology shines from within. Just have a look. Yes. So, so what is this? Yeah, this is an, an app, and you could X-ray the car. Wow, this is, a, I, I mean, this is such a cool app. We did take the rear axle for the GTS from the turbo. That means more torque, more power in the rear, and the front axle is taken uh, is taken from the 4S. So together, this package is much more sporty, much more agile. So, for me as a driver, that just means more fun. Definitely more fun to drive, more drifting capabilities, uh, things like that. Okay, cool. So. Did you just take old parts and, and now you're trying to sell them as something new? <laughs> no, not exactly. <laughs> so, for example, we do not have only the rear axle from the turbo. We have a new suspension on this car. So the chassis setup, the suspension, the engine combination together makes a package that brings more sportiness, more agility to this car. So more fun to drive, hmm. more of what you like. And Alex, there is just one more thing about the car I really like. Just listen. Oh my gosh, that's insane. Yeah. What is that? <laughs> that is our brand new electric GTS sound. So no Porsche is really complete without having its own characteristic sound. This is 100% Hollywood approved. Ha, you guys are not the only ones who have such special effects. That's true, you got me there. But um, I'm sure that you have some tech numbers and info you want to get out, so go on, do it. If we talk about a new Porsche, it's uh, always about performance and power. We have now 440 kilowatts, so 20 more with the real axle, 
of the turbo than the 4S and in terms of acceleration superior. So 0 to 100 km per hour, 3.7 seconds. So this is pretty fast. I mean, it's a little nerdy, but that sounds like a pretty impressive drive. That's the most spectacular 718 I've ever seen. The new 718 came in GD4 RS. What a thing of beauty. Absolutely. A mid-engine powered real action hero. Everything done for, the, for a driver's car and that will, de it's designed to really put a big smile on your face. And regardless if you go on country roads on a Sunday morning or a racetrack. Yeah, well, I know it's not easy to get the RS badge. Run me through some of the key performance items on the chassis side of the new car. Happily, where do you want to start? Handling and precision. Well, yeah, I like corners. You know, uh, they're uh, <laughs> That's pretty what I emotional. Yeah. Well, handling and precision is extremely important for these RS batched uh, cars. So we lower the center of gravity by another 30 mil with our Porsche Active Suspension Management. And the car got a special setup, springs, dampers, roll bars, and also the bearings, so the typical RS components we put in, and uh, that gives you really very, very good control over the car. I know some of that stuff's on uh, our GT race cars. We know at Porsche, we really pride ourselves on the transfer technology. The winning on Sunday does go really into the street cars on, on Monday, so that's still alive, right? The transfer technology is well and truly alive for us. Yeah, absolutely. You know how it goes. And, and this is why we also need guys like you that really guinea pig all the ideas from the engineers and, and then to make a, a proper selection of what is really useful, what we can bring um, and what will survive from the racetrack to the streetcar and then we bring it into production. I think every customer, every driver can feel exactly this. Well, thanks, Frank. That's the, the chassis side done. Now let's have a chat about the soul of the car. Let's talk about the engine. What have we done there? Yeah, now we can reveal the secret. First of all, pure race engine. This is the GT3 engine, the same one we are using in the 911 GT3 Cup and the street legal 911 GT3. Not a detuned engine, it's the bespoke four liter, six cylinder beast, I would say. We worked for sure on the engine management and to bring the air in the engine and everything. The airflow as a result has to go through the cabin and this makes and creates something very, very special. Sounds phenomenal. Uh, give me some numbers. What sort of power are we talking? Yeah, 500 horses. That makes the GT4 RS the most powerful 718 we have ever built. Well, Frank, it's uh, connected to the seven-speed PDK, right? Yeah, every GT car with an RS badge comes with PDK only. That's our best and quickest gearbox. We have to handle 450 Newton meters and it's revving up to 9,000 RPM. Phenomenal. So what does that do for our, you know, zero to 100 and our, uh, what does she, what does she top out at? Well, the, the big figures are zero to 100 is 3.4 seconds and the top speed is 315 kilometers per hour. So, well, pretty impressive, I would say. Super impressive, yeah. Do you want to know what else is impressive? What else we got, mate? I mean, we're running out of tricks, aren't we? <laughs> Listen on this. Hallelujah. Holy cow, mate, that's a roar. It sounds absolutely magnificent. We take weight very seriously at Porsche. Uh, what does she weigh in it? Yeah, you're definitely right. Weight management is, is definitely a science for itself. And um, we have been able to put and replace some of the already light parts of the GT4 um, to even lighter parts with different technology. And so we come down to a weight of 1,415 kilograms. Phenomenal. That's a cracking effort, I must say. Uh, so materials, what have we used? Uh, what's been our go-to material to try and shave some of those key uh, pounds off? Well, racing technology means in many, many times um, it's carbon fiber technology. And for the front uh, hood and for the front fender and also for the massive rear wing, um, we are using carbon fiber, um, very, very light, very stiff, lightweight glassing in the, in the rear of the car, um, exhaust system with a, with a lightweight steel um, design. And if you opt for the Weissach package, you can also have magnesium wheels. We have also gone to stickers, you know, yeah, to save even sure. a few more grams. For sure. In, in the end of the day, everything adds up. So Frank, basically what you're telling us is the GD4 RS is a street legal race car. And the uh, opportunity to have these beautiful swan neck rear wing mounts, uh, the, the knacker ducks. I mean, when you drive this car quickly, we've got awesome brake cooling, which is from our 
GT frames from the racetrack, right? Yeah, exactly. And like in motorsports, all these elements are purely functional. It's not a show or to, to show something. It's, it's all about functionality and increasing the aerodynamics. Numbers, aero numbers. Tell us about how we've made this car such a... the grip in the corners, but then the efficiencies on the straight. Yeah, well, with this RS-specific rear wing, we have the splitter for sure in front to keep the car in balance. Um, the underfloor aerodynamics, that pays a lot um, in it. And so we could increase the total level of downforce if you're using the car on a closed racetrack by 25%. Extraordinary. Porsche never shies away from a big challenge, and we go to the toughest venues in the world. Uh, Nürburgring, the Nordschleife, we love to test the components there and the cars. What lap time are we talking? For sure the Nürburgring, and I'll show you something. An amazing time there, Frank. That was extraordinary. But talking about time, we have another little, nice little piece there that can link us to the oh, customer yeah. and the car. That's uh, one of the latest creations from uh, Porsche Design. Really a nice piece and it fits perfect to the exterior interior colors and it's exclusively only for GT4 RS customers. Good stuff. Let's go back to Nürburgring. Run us through the day, sort of the, how, how the, the time compared to sort of other experiences we've had there. Is look, they, they shaved off 23 seconds of the lap time of the 718 GT4. That was really astonishing. And the team and Jörg Bergmeister was the driver. They, they, had, they, they nailed down the perfect lap. Really huge congratulations. And it was not, I'll be honest, it was not expected to be so good. Well, knowing his big smile, I'm sure he's still yeah. got it now, Jorgi. <laughs> yeah. But Frank, um, it's not the end of the road for us, right, with this car? No, absolutely not. For those of us who love it even more raw and undiluted, uh, we have the GT4 RS Club Sport. Um, that's the car for our racing customers. Awesome. So it's basically going to be used for uh, multiple series around the world. Uh, it's uh, stripped out the bare minimum. Uh, whenever you put the fireproof overalls on, you're going to be have in there with the roll cage. You're going to have the racing seat. You're going to have the racing steering wheel. So full track machine. And also with better handling and better performance if I compare it to the predecessor. That made the GT4 category so popular all over the world. And in other words, that's the car for you, Mark. What a car. Right up my alley. It was so good to talk to Frank about that. And I'm looking forward to driving it more in the future. But what I'm really interested in also is to see how that really, you know, talks to our sustainability uh, topics that Oliver was talking about before. Let me give you an answer, Mark. Um, our race car, the GT4S Club Sport, is a low volume car. And for us, that is a perfect playground for developing new technologies. What technologies, for example, are we talking about? Yeah, for example, um, the renewable fibers we use for lightweight um, for this car um, is a perf perfect example. Like Emission R? Exactly. And this is a car which will come to a customer cup racing as well. And in the future, great opportunities to test uh, e-fuels as well. Also, we are testing e-fuels in motorsport, and our idea is to use them for first filling in the factory or in testing or in our Porsche experience centers. Yep, mm -hmm. and we could just continuously have that learning curve from winning on Sundays, the transfer of technology from the racetracks onto the, onto the street cars. Any chance of a key? Of course. Enjoy the ride. Yes. Incredible day for me. My mind has been blown again. Uh, we continue to deliver. Uh, thanks for the invite, and I must say I've pretty much got the best job in the world. So it's been it's been special. It has been a great pleasure having you here, Mark. Uh, fantastic cars indeed, very different, but 100% sports cars. That's a Porsche way. 100% agree. Looking forward to seeing you next time. Yeah, looking forward to see you.